In this week's tip, we examine how the flared ends of aluminum tubing used for brake and fuel lines are created with a flaring tool. There are a couple of popular 37 degree flaring tool styles that you will find at your favorite aviation store. Here is one of them. This style of flaring tool is very popular and is comprised of two separate components. It can handle the popular sizes of tubing we use in our aircraft. Let's demonstrate this tool now. The first step is to ensure that we can have a clean cut, burr free, before we can flare. This is accomplished with a tubing cutter as shown here. The blade is tightened with a knob as we rotate the cutter around the tube. After cutting with the tubing cutter, a burr remains inside the opening of the tube and it's very important to remove this burr before flaring. Steve will take it from here. Okay, yeah, the best way to deburr this is uh, to use a knife and just get in the, you know, take it at about a 45. And as long as you get that chip to come out, you don't have to worry about contaminating the inside of the tube with filings. Just come And then, I like to leave it about just, just a little bit proud of the surface there. Oh. Like sticking up maybe a 64th. Mm. Get it nice and tight. Any, any kind of oil on the tube is good. Just anything to lubricate the end of that. And then you flare until you feel it stop. Once it stops, if you go more than that, you'll just end up cracking the tube. And the flare should be the same diameter as the uh, as the sleeve. As the sleeve, okay. Oh, that's neat. And if you did it right, the nut will fit over it. If you make it too big, the nut won't go on it. Ah, okay. And you've got to get where the tubing cutter left that little burr in there. You got to get that out. And the best way is to get a small knife blade and go in there. And this stuff's soft. You can just cut it right out. A lot of people use a file, but then you got all those filings that you have to get out of there. This way you know you haven't left any debris in there. Right. <clears throat> we'll put the sleeve on. Then we'll... When we put this in this tool... Do we need to put the nut on or not? The nut, the nut can go around the bends, oh, okay. but the sleeve can't, so you need to get the sleeve on first. And then what I do is I, I put that in the tool so that it's just proud of the surface, maybe a 64th of an inch or so sticking up. That'll give you the, the just barely sticking up though, not too much. If you, if you have too much sticking out, the flare will be too big, you'll never get the nut on it. Then. This tool should be lubricated. I'm using a spray grease. Just a little bit of grease on there. And then all you do is you tighten this down until it stops. When it stops, you're done. That's all you, that's all you need. And our then I always look at these really close to make sure there's no cracks around the edges and it hasn't cracked. When it's done properly, the flare should be the same size as the sleeve. This is another popular style flaring tool. It is comprised of a single component. Although it is clearly a different design, its function and operation are similar to the style we just witnessed. 
Some consider this one easier to operate because of its one-piece design. Here, Gus is flaring a tube for us. One final word of wisdom, practice making flares, and then practice some more. You will find yourself getting better each time, and in no time you can make really nice flares consistently. And always inspect each flare end for any cracks. If necessary, simply cut off the end and re-flare.